I won't waste your guys' time. If you clicked on this video, then obviously you care about your self-improvement. You want to start improving your life. And honestly, I really do respect you for even wanting to do that because just that desire alone is so rare nowadays. The majority of people now could care less about improving their life. The majority of people are completely away. The majority of people are completely okay with just wasting their life away, indulging in their instant gratification and they're happy with that. They think they're happy, but the consequences of those actions are gonna catch up with them very soon. But you're different than that. You actually care about your life and you want to start improving it. But there is one thing that you have to know and implement before you start. If you don't implement this thing, then you're not going to be able to consistently improve yourself. And this isn't an action that you're going to do or a habit that you're gonna repeat. It's a principle. It's a concept that you have to internalize and understand. If you don't understand understand it and believe it, then you're not going to be consistent and you're going to fall off your self-improvement journey. That principle is the very simple idea of accountability. You have to take accountability for your actions moving forward. The things you do, the actions that you partake in, whether they be good or bad, you are 100% reliable and accountable for them. You can't blame anybody else. You can't blame your environment or conditions. You are the product of your actions. That means that whatever you do you're responsible for the consequences that are gonna come afterwards it also means that you deserve the actions of the things that you were doing so if you go to the gym consistently you push yourself hard you eat the right foods and you deserve a nice strong body if you meditate consistently then you deserve a clear calm peaceful mind but if you eat junk food consistently if you don't take care of your health then you deserve bad health if you're constantly scrolling on social media for hours a day, then you deserve to feel bad about yourself. And you know, and I'm sure this might be off-putting to hear because no one has ever really talked to us in this way. It's a bit, it's a bit aggressive. It's a bit of the hard truth because we were raised very soft nurtured into always thinking that you know no matter what we do or what we say we're still special and we deserve the best it's not that's not how the real world works unfortunately if you do bad things you're gonna get bad results if you do the right things you're going to get right results how does it make sense to expect that you can do all of the bad habits, but then still get the good, great results that you want. That's not how life works. And it might sound obvious, but I can bet that for the majority of your life, you probably weren't raised that way. You weren't raised with that awareness and accountability of your actions. We were always given participation medals and told that we were doing a great job, even if we weren't, because we didn't want our feelings to get hurt. Sometimes you do need your feelings to get hurt sometimes you need to feel bad about yourself in order to actually improve and change we can only lie to ourselves for so long about the situation of our lives at one point we have to take some accountability and say you know what these actions that I did got me to where I am right now. I knew that doing those actions are going to make me feel bad. So I deserve to feel bad. Again, you might be thinking, what do you mean I deserve? I should never deserve to feel bad about myself. You should, I should. If I'm doing the bad habits, if I'm indulging in junk food, if I'm not going to the gym, if I'm procrastinating my work, then I, I deserve to feel bad about myself when those assignments catch up to me, when I start getting a gut and I start feeling weak. I deserve to feel bad because I did the things that are going to make me feel bad. Having that accountability is the first step to change. Because once I realize within myself that I'm in the situation I am because of the things that I did, once you have this accountability, then you're finally able to make some change. Because if I think to myself, you know what? I'm in this situation because of the things that I did. Well, I can also get myself out of this situation by performing different actions, by performing the good habits that will get me those goals you have to admit your faults you have to realize when you've messed up so you can actually change if you do not admit your faults then you cannot change I'm gonna repeat that again and I want you to write this down if you do not admit your faults you will never change there's a huge difference between someone who looks at himself and thinks you know what I'm young but I'm weak I don't go to the gym I don't exercise and I've, I've been trying to and I've been struggling with it and I know I should go, but I've never really gone. There's a huge difference between that person and someone in the same scenario who says to himself, you know what?
what? Sure, I might not have gone to the gym, but it's really not that important. I'm fine. I'm still young. I got time. And who said going to the gym is important anyways? I mean, why would I want to be, you know, strong and masculine? That That's such toxic masculinity. And I don't want any part of that. There's a huge difference between both of those attitudes because the first person is eventually going to succeed. He's going to struggle. He's going to go to the gym and then he's going to stop going and he's going to have this back and forth, but eventually he's going to figure it out. And eventually he's going to be consistent and he's going to work out for years and he's going to look at himself in the mirror one day and have this strong aesthetic body and he's going to think to himself i'm so glad that i stuck with it that i took accountability and started going while the second person is going to just be filled with regret because over the years they didn't take care of their health they didn't take care of their body now they look down and they have this gut they can't even see their toes and they have weak shoulders and they just feel miserable about themselves and guess what the first person deserves to feel good and he deserves to feel proud and the second person deserves to feel bad about himself because they had the option they had the choice both of them could choose whether they wanted to work on themselves or to take it easy and indulge and they became the product of their actions so they deserve to get what they got if you have one person who says you know what i know i'm addicted to social media i know this is an issue and i know that it's affecting my mental health and i need to figure out how to stop it versus someone who doesn't even think social media is an issue he keeps telling himself no of course social media it doesn't affect me at all i'm totally fine i i just i just use it for a bit to catch catch up with my friends the first guy's gonna struggle he's gonna have his ups and his downs but eventually he's gonna figure it out and his mental health is gonna improve because he finally gave up that thing that was destroying his mental health and the second guy is gonna lie to himself and tell himself that it's fine it's not an issue and he's gonna keep using social media and he's gonna pretend that he's happy but deep inside he is depressed he hates his life social media is eating away at his happiness the only difference between them is that the first person took accountability he took accountability for the problem that was in front of him and asked himself what can i do to solve this problem if you do not take accountability you will never change if you keep doing those actions of instant gratification then don't be surprised when you end up in that place hamza talks about this issue and when he gave a really good example of trying you know trying to get to point a this is where you want to be but then you keep doing the things that get you to point b that get you over here imagine you want to go to New York, okay? Your goal, your end mission is New York. But then in your GPS, you put in the directions for Texas. And then so now you're driving and you keep thinking to yourself, how did I just end up in Texas? I was trying to go to New York. I mean, I, I guess I might as well just keep driving south. It's, it's a dumb example, but it's exactly what we're doing. We want to get to this point, but then we keep doing the things that get us over here. Seeing what you can change, you have to start taking accountability for that. You have to sit with yourself and think to yourself, how, how am I as a person right now? Where is my life headed toward? What actions am I doing to take me to the goal that I want, to make me into the man or the woman who I want to be in 10 years? Even the Quran talks about this topic of accountability. Allah says, Man ihtada fa inna ma yahtadi li nafsi. When you do the act of guidance, Man ihtada fa inna ma yahtadi li nafsi, then he will be guided. You do the act of guidance, you pray on time, you read Quran, you stay away from sins, you go to the masjid, then you will be guided. You deserve that outcome because you did the act of guidance the opposite is true if you if you misguide if you do the actions of misguidance then you will be misguided it sounds very practical but it's the truth you keep committing sins you keep going away from allah you keep doing the actions of misguidance then guess what you're going to be misguided no soul will bear the burden of another soul in other words you are completely and ultimately accountable for your actions no one else will come on the day of judgment and take the blame for you no one else will come and say ya Allah I'm the one who misguided him ya Allah I'm the one who told him to do this sin you are 100% accountable for the things that you did you can't blame it on anybody else you can't blame it on your environment you can't even blame it on shaitan so when are you gonna take accountability when are you gonna realize that you are the one who is ultimately in control of your life once you can do that once you can start taking accountability you will see the improvement in your life you will see this this new perspective that you have about self-improvement and then you can start really doing those actions that will allow you to improve and you will deserve that improvement that you see in your life barakallah fikum may Allah make it easy for you guys i'll catch you in the next one assalamu alaikum